Who is going to win the AFL Grand Final for 2024? Sydney or the Brisbane Lions? It's the question that's really played on my mind for the last couple of days, and I truthfully haven't landed on a, a, a single answer for this yet because there's so many variable factors at play here uh, that could swing in either favour for both clubs. Sydney, they've been the team to beat all year until, I mean, they hit that little bit of a form slump in the latter part of the year. Maybe it was a, a bit of a heavy training load to gear up for a big final series after they had first spot pretty well wrapped up. Uh, their midfield has just been unbelievably good, just blitzing everybody with Goulden, um, Warner. Isaac Heaney has, has had undoubtedly his best season of his career um, and is equally as damaging up forward as he is in the midfield. Brody Grundy's been a very good acquisition for the, for the Swannies. Uh, probably hasn't been seeing the world on fire recently, but he will be licking his lips at the chance to get a huge redemption story in an AFL grand final. Uh, but this, the Swans, Fords, Big Joel Amadi uh, and Logan McDonald, they're probably going to be the big factors in this game. They've both got a fire. Uh, the Brisbane defense is pretty rock solid. Harris Andrews does a fantastic job down there. And if both of those Fords aren't dangerous for the Swans, I, I just don't know if they'll be able to kick a big enough score. Having said that, though, the Swanee Smalls in, like, Tom Papley, you know, he's the type of player who thrives on a big stage, and you could easily see him bobbing up, kicking two or three. Isaac Heaney, like I said before, he's going to drift forward. He can cause some damage. So it's the Sydney Smalls that are probably going to have to get the job done because I do think the Swans bigs might have their hands full with the Lions defenders. Um, should be a, that, that will be a fascinating set of matchups. But the Swans... If they can get their angled kick game going, so by that I mean if they can, if they're able to chip the ball inboards 45 degrees to open the ground up to let their runners explode and and run through the the center of the ground, it's going to cause a lot of headaches for the Lions. Um, it's it's something they've been able to execute so well all year. I suppose it, it looks a bit more dynamic and better on the SCG being a smaller ground. So the the question is how will it translate to the MCG being a bigger ground um, and with a lot more pressure attached to it as well. But looking forward to seeing how they go executing that. For the Brisbane Lions, they are, I've said for a little while now, I think I said when they're in their form slump mid-year, I think I'm confident I was on record as saying they're the type of team that could go on a 10 or 11 game winning streak and make top four. And they just missed the top four, but they have come home with an absolute bullet in this last part of the season. Um, their finals have had some extraordinary wins coming from behind in some, some big margins. And I, I thought they'd spend all their petrol tickets and I wasn't sure they'd get through the prelim, um, but they dug deep there as well. And here we are, you know, showing up in another grand final. For me, the big key for the Brisbane Lions though, I've always had big question marks on some of their big X Factor players. So players like Charlie Cameron, Cam Rayner, um, can they step up in a big moment? Eric Hipwood, he's one that I probably constantly mention about he needs to have a big output in games like this for them to be any chance. Joe Danaher can't do this one out. Uh, Hipwood's going to have to somehow get dangerous. Whether they try and actively get the ball in Hipwood's hands early to get him a goal, um, to get his confidence up and to, to make sure the Swans de defenders have to be accountable for him, I'm not sure, but they, yeah, they have to get busy. If they don't, I can't see them winning. But having said that, I think from a player versus player perspective, I do think the Lions probably have the most talent and most X factor about them out of the two sides. So yeah, if they can all get up and firing, um, they, they should be able to get the job done. The other big one for the Lions is the uncontested mark game. So they do love to chip the ball around. Um, if they take if they take close to 100 uncontested marks, typically speaking, it's almost game over for the opposition. So Sydney have to be aware to that. They've got to make sure they're pressing up and, and defending tightly. They can't just let them chip it around and work their way up the ground methodically. Um, so I'm sure they'll be all across that. But keep an eye out here for the uncontested marking game of the Brisbane Lions which should be fascinating. Uh, obviously, the other big story for Brisbane is the big O is missing from the ruck department, who I think is one of the more underrated ruckmen of the comp. He's a, he's a fantastic ruckman, and he's going to be sorely missed from the Lions. But it presents a huge opportunity for Darcy Fort, who has played, I think, two games this year. His last game was, I think, Anzac Day, somewhere around there. Hasn't played in a win yet this year for the Lions. Um, has been doing fairly well in their VFL. He missed the last couple of weeks. I think he was like a holdover player for the Brisbane Lions seniors. Uh, but what a story that's going to be for him and what an opportunity that he has to make a name for himself and step up in a, in a massive time of need. We always hear AFL coaches talk about, you know, the one in one out policy where if someone goes out injured, that someone should always be readily available to come in and play that role. 
there's no more better example of that happening uh, than this right now. So Darcy Ford, good luck. It's a, a huge stage, huge opportunity. Um, and yeah, I, I think it's going to be fascinating to see how he handles that. The Norm Smith is going to be an interesting battle as well. Both of these sides have such huge amount of X-Factor players. You've got Tom Papley, you've got Warner, Heaney, Goulden, um, Blakey. Then on the other side of the coin, you've got Cameron, you've got Rayner, um, Zach Bailey, Dunkley, Neil. Like, there's just so many names that could bob up and have a huge influence on this match to kick it, you know, to, to whether, it, whether it's kicking the winning goal or racking up a huge amount of disposals, laying some big tackles, whatever it might be. Uh, it's going to be a fascinating race to see who wins that Norm Smith medal as well. As for my final tip, I, I, I'm really entering this with a lot of uncertainty uh, and conviction in my answer, but I think Sydney being the best team all year might just be a bit more rock solid, a bit more confident in their ability. I've still got a couple of small question marks over Brisbane's mental fragility in a grand final. Um, I just think there's a couple of still, a little, little bit of a hurdle for them to overcome. They may very well do it this weekend, um, but I just think for if I'm going for certainty in a bit, team where I'm most confident in performing on a bigger stage, I'm going to back the Swans, um, maybe by about, let's say, 18 to 20 points. And for the Norm Smith, I'll go with, I'll go with Chad Warner. He's another one of those players that uh, loves a big stage and you can just see him doing some ridiculous things on, on grand final day. So there you go. There's my tip for grand final day. Keen to hear who you all think is going to win the grand final. Let us know in the comments below and hopefully we see a ripping game on Saturday.